Hey everyone, for those who don't know me, I'm Azima. I'm from My English Matters. And together with my sisters, we teach second language learners how to speak English, how to improve their English through our courses, our website at myenglishmatters.com, through our workshops, our training, our courses, and so much, so much more. And if you're a subscriber, you would know that we do that also through our emails that uh, Amna normally sends every Thursday for free. So uh, that's, um, that's what we do. Okay, good morning. All right, we're going to talk about five things you can do at home to improve your English. So these are the five things that I do as well. I still do uh, as I continue to improve my English and I try to improve my other languages that I'm, I'm learning as well at the moment. Okay. okay, so tip number one, be mentally prepared. So five things you can do at home. Tip number one is to be mentally prepared because you're learning a language, isn't it? It's not easy for you. So I'm going to ask you, when must you use or speak English? When? When? So for example, do you have a meeting that's coming up? Or do you have an interview? Do you have a group discussion? Presentation? Maybe if you're a student, you have an exam that's coming up, an oral exam where you have to speak English or write in English. So to be mentally prepared, it's basically giving yourself at least a head start, right? A head start or a 24-hour head start or a week head start. You have to be mentally prepared. That means filling your thoughts in English, filling so that you no longer, you're no longer translating your thoughts from your first language. Maybe it's Malay. So that you are, instead, things are in English, okay? So it's like an athlete, basically, um, a sports player, what they have to warm up. They don't just enter a competition or they don't enter any event not having warmed up, right? They have to do hours and hours of training and warming up. And even when they are about to play the sports at the event, itself they still have to do stretching they have to get their muscles warmed and you know things like that so speaking is the same thing or using english is the same thing you need to warm up and so you give yourself a few good hours before that particular event and be mentally prepared by switching off bahasa melayu or whatever language that you speak and think only in english right that's being mentally prepared when I mean um, being mentally prepared with English, it means preparing phrases, uh, preparing your points, what you're going to talk about, rehearsing out loud even. So do this weekend, the weekend before, the day before, the night before. Write things, write your points in English. Um, do it hours in advance. So many things that you have to do so you, don't, you do not enter an event absolutely shocked. Okay, all right. So when you are mentally prepared, that should get you going. You're no longer panicking, hopefully. And then I want you to also incorporate this as well, right? Apart from being one of the ways that you are mentally prepared, apart from preparing the phrases, is also to prepare phrases to say to yourself, phrases to say to yourself, positive self-talk phrases. Those are the things that I have to switch on even for me, um, when I face a challenge, I have to say, oh, this is an exciting challenge for me, right? Or I'll say to myself, you can do this. You can do this. No problem. It's going to be fun. This is going to be interesting. This will be exciting. It's going to be amazing. I have to come up with exciting phrases to get myself pumped up and ready. It's like being a coach right? It's like coaching myself. I have to say that. I can't wait for other people to tell me that. So whenever people give me a challenge, for example, I had this had this challenge, which is to host a radio segment on Manis FM. When they asked me, do you want to do a segment? Well, not just one segment, but for six months, do a segment every week. My thoughts were like, wow, this is going to be exciting. I've never done this before. But in my head, it was like, this is going to be exciting. It's scary, but I want to pump up myself by saying, this is exciting. 
uh, this is going to be a wonderful challenge for me. I'm going to stretch myself. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone which is my word, actually. It's like a motto for me. Get out of your comfort zone, okay? So what are your positive self-talk phrases? And what are, how, and what are you, uh, what is the upcoming event that you need to prepare yourself, right? To, towards, okay? So uh, answer this question. You can write down in the comments. And while I say hello to all the uh, viewers there. Hi, hi, Naima. Okay. Uh, Asmira, oh, I'm, I'm going to read your comments. I always watch Malay movies with English subtitles. It's good, actually, as you will know when to use the words in the right context. I'm at school. Asmira, hi. Wow. I don't know if you know, but my sisters and I, uh, we were television subtitlists. And uh, we did, uh, I actually do a lot of Malay movie subtitles. I don't know if you've ever seen the movies, but I can't mention the names of the movies, but many of them uh, on Astro, right? But I don't, I, I've stopped doing them for a while now, but I did it all of, all of last year. So I hope that, I hope maybe you have watched uh, some of my shows. I don't know, but hopefully it's been helpful for you. Okay, um, all right. Hi, hello, hello. Arena Zafira, yay. Great. I want to hear your self-talk. Trust me, I trust myself. That's the thing as well. If you go blank, if you feel scared, just take a deep breath. Even talk to yourself. Okay, uh, Azima, or I'll just use your name, Zafira. Take a deep breath. Calm down. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. You can do this, right? And as for Muslims, we go back to Allah. Allah, give me calmness. Give me the ability to speak. Give me the ability to understand what's going on and all. Okay? All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you more tips because as one, he said, wow, well, best near kalau lancha English. I'm going to give you five tips. I've given you one, being mentally prepared. I'm going to give you four more, four more to go to help you get through uh, and not just get through English, but to love the language and to be able to use the language well. Okay. Right, Iza Shahira. Hi, Madam Azima. I'm your ex Tesla student. Hi, Iza Shahira. So happy to have you here. Thank you for joining me. It's wonderful. Okay, so you guys got it. Be mentally prepared. Be mentally prepared. Like there's an analogy that I gave, which was being pe prepared like an athlete warmed up for his or her uh, sporting event, athletic event. All right, uh, another thing. Still here at, at uh, tip number one, I want to I want to share with you that the most successful people in life that I've studied, and I'm sure you've studied as well, you've seen them on YouTube, you've seen them on television, you've seen the books that they've produced. The most successful people in life try out things and they stretch themselves. They don't stay too long in their comfort zone. That's because they are mentally prepared to just face challenges, right? And, and I'm going to ask you now, you know the challenge is good for you if it makes your heart race. This is what Marie Forleo, Marie Forleo, I don't have a book here, but Marie Forleo is an um, American author. She's also a businesswoman. She talked about challenging yourself and keep on growing. It's good for you if you feel excited about it, right? It's excited. That means that you have to do it. You have to do it. Okay. So being mentally prepared is also um, forgiving yourself, forgiving your mistakes. So even if you face the challenge and unfortunately it didn't go as well as you thought it was going to go, you thought that it was going to go smooth sailing, for example, your presentation, right? Or your interview, you thought you're going to get it. You get it. You spoke English so well, you've prepared. But unfortunately, you know, um, things didn't work out as planned and it didn't go as as smoothly as you thought it would go. So what do you do? This is a part of being mentally prepared. Forgive your mistakes and then tell this to yourself. Okay, this is an opportunity to learn. This is an opportunity for me to learn. That's it. Or, okay, it's all right. I will improve. I will improve. And then look to the future. Look to the future. Um, or, 
Alhamdulillah for this experience. Alhamdulillah for this experience. Now I know not to do this. Now I know that when this happens, I'm going to do this next time, right? Because every opportunity that's presented to yourself is meant to be that. It was meant to, to challenge you. It was meant to, it was meant to um, make you grow, right? You can't, n nothing in life is perfect, right? So as I said, when we talk about stretching yourself, getting out of your comfort zone, it means being prepared for things when it just doesn't work out, when things just don't work out, okay? So what can you say to yourself the next time you face a challenge? Write your phrase down in the comments. What can you say to yourself the next time you face a challenge? Mine would be, wow, what a great, that was great. That was a great opportunity for me to learn. Or, oof, okay, I will improve next time. I know what to do next. I know what my action steps are, okay? Sometimes it's about, for example, if I didn't get enough rest, I'll, I'll know. I'll say, okay, next time you need to rest. Don't work too hard. Don't burn yourself out. Okay. All right. So th think of it this way. Um, is it an opportunity for you to grow? And so come up with some phrases for you. Okay. Siti Shakira, challenge is good. Yes. Challenge is good. Exactly. If you want to stay the same, then don't take any challenges. But challenges will come anyway. Right. But any challenge is just meant for you to just stretch yourself and grow. Okay. I remember um, learning French, right? I learned French back in high school in England with uh, Mrs. Fisher. So, um, hello, Mrs. Fisher. I don't know if she's watching, but <laughs> I don't think she is. But anyway, um, we had to learn French, one of our foreign languages that we chose. I chose French. There was German. There was another, um, there were Urdu. So we had to choose any of these three subjects. I chose French to take as my O level. That was back in high school, right? And she was, she was a strict teacher. Um, she was very nice. I mean, she was she was lovely, but she was also very strict with her students. And then when I entered fr French class, right, learning a second language, learning a foreign language, my third language. I was shaking when I go, when I went to class, shaking all the time. And if she asked me to volunteer or to read something on the whiteboard, my voice would be shaking. And then whenever, whenever she gives me, us, all homework, which was to memorize phrases, and then, you know, memorize so that tomorrow she can interview you and you have to answer in English, my voice would actually be shaking. And... Um, but that experience, that was a challenge for me. I knew I wanted to please her very much. So I was scared, but I was learning French scared. So it wasn't necessarily an enjoyable experience. I'm thankful for the experience as I look back now. But I just think of it this way. Wow, that was a challenge. And, and I could do it even though I was scared. Even though my voice was shaking. I still did it. And luckily for me, I got the grade that I wanted. Um, right? Thank God for that. Uh, it pleased her. My my late father was very pleased with the grade that, that I, I got. However, my French now is like really poor because I haven't used it. I have not read any French books, not watched any French movies. Unfortunately, I would say that that grade, the A grade that I got was only for that exam, unfortunately. So that was my fault. That was my fault. I didn't learn French after the exam. Okay, so uh, that's what's something that I want to share. I'll come back to this story afterwards. It's about what's your intention. Okay, all right. Um, oh, let me see what else you guys want to share. Marzween, I speak English with my children, daily routine with simple words. For example, before they go to school, on the way to school, when having breakfast. Yay! I'm so happy to hear your progress. Marzween is our Communicate with Confidence student so i'm so proud of your progress i'm so proud i'm really happy to hear that you are doing this and it's becoming a habit now it's wonderful okay tip number two get as much english input as you can get as much english input as you can so number one was being mentally prepared number two get as much english input as you can what i mean by input are the things that you're reading 
listening, speaking, and well, writing would be an output, but I still want to come back to writing. Okay. So when I talk about Let's do listening because listening is very, very easy. Listening is one way that's easy for you because you get a lot of input from things that you're simply listening by, you know, from while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're cleaning, uh, on your way somewhere, while you're waiting. You can be listening to English, um, English uh, resources, right? English, re English audio. So my favorite would be podcasts now do you guys listen to podcasts okay my favorite would be uh, podcasts so um i would have on my phone on my phone this app called stitcher uh, s-t-i-t-c-h-e-r there are other apps there are other apps but actually maybe you can write them write the app uh, down the name of the app it's an app where you are you can access hundreds and hundreds of channels it's all audio only. So if you have internet access, it's good. But sometimes you can even download the shows. So they have business podcasts, um, health, uh, what else? so many things, personal development, spirituality, exercise, so many things there. So many things that you can learn just from listening. And I, I mean consciously listening to what they are saying, the words that they use, the phrases, how they greet each other, the energy, the pronunciation. Uh, choose, choose, uh, choose any topics that you like so you can improve your listening skill, right? And then get the words from there as well. So that's from listening. What about uh, watching television, uh, watching Netflix? I'm sure you guys do that. I'm sure you do that. I I remember when I was a child, I loved watching sitcoms. Uh, I would watch sitcoms as you know situational comedy. It's it's like a half hour show. The audience are laughing, and then uh, so I would watch things like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's like it's old. It's Will Smith, but I loved it. I lo I watched Friends. I watched even the classic Golden Girls. What else? What else did we watch? Amna and Asha, you guys can type the, them down below. But I remember watching Coming Home and looking forward to these um, things. Blossom was one of them. These feel-good 90s shows on TV. They, they were wholesome, I think. I don't know about the t TV now. It really depends on the, what you're watching. But when we, when I, when we went home, because back in, back in England, uh, school ended at 3.30. 3.30. So when I got home, one of my routine is to turn the television on and watch uh, like a, it's like a, it's not, it's not a talk show, but it's like a children's show with a host and his puppet. Uh, and then he's just talking. And then there I was just admiring like, wow, I hope I have a television show one day. But I was like enjoying myself watching um, Andy Peters, his name was. And then after that, it was like back to back. After that, I watch uh, 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 Australian soap, soap opera. Is it soap opera? Soap, like Neighbours, Home and Away. And then after that, it was, yeah, up, up until evening, I was like a TV addict at the time. Now, don't, it's not a good habit to be a TV addict, but I enjoyed getting as much input as I can because I wanted to get ready to become fluent, to go to school the next day. So those are the things that really helped me. And another thing that I did was, you know, we have, uh, we have captions and you guys have captions now on Netflix. Turn it on, captions, English captions. It helps you to see what they are saying, the words, uh, even the description of them laughing, standing, sitting, chuckling, whatever what's, what, whatever that the, chuck, uh, the captions tell you, their movement, that will help you to improve your vocabulary. Okay. Yeah, we probably watched too much TV. Yes, we did. Because we were like stuck in the house. Because you can't really go out in the evening. Because by the time it's, it's 3.30, half past three, coming back from uh, school, it was already quite dark. So you can't really go out to have dinner or anything. It's always home-cooked meals. Because halal food, it, you know, your mum provides the halal food. Okay. Sesame Street. Yes, Aisha, I forgot to mention Sesame Street was my favourite. Too, I loved watching Sesame Street. 
yeah, I learned a lot from them. Aisha too. Okay. Oh, let me see. Uh, mind your language on TV. All right, great. Frasier, yes. Puachukang, great. Tell me what you guys watched. Let's go back to our childhood. Okay. Um, Frasier is really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Saved by the Bell. Yeah, California Dreams, American television shows. Thanks, Amna. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to put it up here so people can see. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, I love to read subtitles. Oh, okay. Oh, is there a subtitle there? Captions auto-generated down below? Yeah, Facebook does that now. But I think it's an option. You guys watched Under One Roof. Oh, I've never watched Under One Roof before. Okay, thank you guys for sharing. Right. So some of these shows might, uh, I don't know if it still exists or uh, it's ended, but it's okay. Find new shows that's wholesome, something that you enjoy, you can enjoy with your family, you know. All right, great. So one, you do, think about when are you going to, when when do you want to put this english session um where schedule it is it at home is it while you're driving and put it in your phone now your phone can save so many shows and 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 stuff so yeah a lot of things that you can do all right so that's watching listening um reading okay now let's go to reading now how many of you love reading all right love to read how many of you love to read because uh, i know when i ask my students how many of you read they will tell you i don't have time i don't really read um, i used to read when i was a child now i don't i just read i just read um, twitter okay oh lucy show all right <laughs> watching your live while my kids are screaming mira take care of them okay Say hello to them. All right. Okay. Oh, love to sing Westlife. Ah, love to read. Yes. Thank you, Nazira Banu. Yay. Okay. Right. Reading was something that my mom had to, my mom and dad had to instill in us as we were children back in the UK. Because when, when, I, when we went there, we didn't speak much English, to be honest. I was eight. Amna was five. We have five, Aisha was like three, right? So we grew up in a Malay household and our, my neighbors back in Malaysia, um, they spoke English to us. They were Chinese, they spoke English to us. We were, but I understood uh, English. However, when we had to move to the UK, I didn't speak a word of English. That's when I realized that, oh no, I couldn't, I couldn't speak English, I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. I was so scared. I was eight years old at the time. And so my mom and dad felt really, you know, obviously they felt really bad for us. And, and they knew that they had to get their daughters, you know, they had to help us, obviously. So as parents, my my mom, my mom would go to would go to bookshop bookshops and look for books, look for books, and so she bought books. And then books were quite expensive at the time. And um, one day she found out that you could actually get secondhand books for a cheaper price, a lot more cheaper price. So uh, cheaper in terms of, in, compare it to let's say five pounds, but in England, um, if you talk about secondhand books, it could be as low as 10p, 10p, that would be like, Number of sin, basically, yeah, ten p, twenty p. She would look for them, secondhand, secondhand books at car boot sales back in England, and so that's when I think that's the love. That's how, for us siblings, that's how we ended up loving the um, English language. So she bought us books like Enid Blyton books, right? Those were classics, right? Enid Blyton. Um, oh, R.L. Stein. Uh, yeah, but not yet because I was a child then. R.L. Stein would be when you're a teenager. I'm sure Nadra, but I was a child then. So R.L. Stein was not appropriate for me at the time. But my mom would buy us 
books like these classic i told you it's second hand so it's old do you see this this is judy for girls 1983 second hand obviously second hand it's unfortunately it's all yellow now it's all you know it's a bit old now it's, but yeah i'll tell you what it looks like i've always wanted to show you um what these comic books look like and now they're sold like this is what it looks like uh so colored comics um in here and i think that's how aisha fell in love with drawing and for me i fell in love um with stories from comics like these that my mum bought so she'd buy stacks and stacks of them and we would read them every sunday it was better than chocolate it was better than book uh, it was be sorry it was better than any presents that my mum could could get us it was better than food that's how much we loved reading i loved reading every sunday and and so that's how i spent uh, my weekend reading 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 okay um all right yeah the books were cheap that book is older. Yeah, it's older than us. Okay, so uh, yeah, we had like 1970s books, 60s. Um, it, was, it was really great. Loved it. Okay. And as I grew older, as I grew older, my tastes obviously changed. That's when I moved to horror, horror books like R.L. Stein, uh, Point Horror, even Sweet Valley books. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Sweet Valley. I'm sure Sweet Valley series uh, were in Malaysia too, but at the time it was in England. I would go to the library and look for them, Sweet Valley books. My friends and I, my Malaysian friends, we had Mal I had Malaysian friends also in England. We would be the one looking for Sweet Valley books back in the, li back in the library. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, Goosebumps. Yeah, R.L. Stein, exactly. Though the things that we learned during our childhood really helped us a lot helped us a lot so so that's that's how we improved our uh english proficiency our uh, fluency okay nadra uh I, you loved enid blyton's too my mom wanted to give away our collections of enid blyton's to other kids for free none were interested wow so you get to still keep your books Sweet Valley! Oh my goodness, I know. Sweet Valley was like a was like guilty pleasure. I even wrote several stories. It was like um Sweet Valley based. American it was like American teenagers. Even though I wasn't American, I was living in the UK, but because you're influenced by what you read, my characters were American speaking in in my head. They they had uh you know blue eyes and spoke with an American accent. So funny. Okay. Um, well, let me see. My sweetest memory was when my teacher asked for my suggestion what books uh, he should ask his students to read. That time I was 15 years old. Wow, that's great. Okay. I'm really happy to hear. You guys, yeah, coming, remembering your childhood. That's like really great. Okay. Okay. So that's reading. Um, as I said, as I grew older, my reading tastes changed and later on i moved from horror books to personal development books personal development books so currently that would be things like brendan burchard high performance habits now it's all about personal development now uh, i've moved on and um it was my father my late father actually he he had like our his um, our bookshelves were filled with personal development books and I think it was from my father because I saw, uh, this is from my father actually, he would have these sort of books, Napoleon Hill and so many more like um, Tony Robbins, Stephen Covey, he was interested in those things but when I was like a teenager I'd look at those titles, I'd be like, who are they? These books are so boring, so thick, it's like, oh it looks like that when I was younger, but as I grew older, I appreciated it and I ended up buying my own sort of, these sort of books, which are, you know, really thick, but I loved it. I love it. No, I loved it. I still love it. 
So that's my favorite topics. What are yours? What are yours? So you think about it. And, and, and as I, as you grow older, more mature, I, I changed, not I changed, but I developed my taste for Islamic books, spirituality books, spiritual books. So this is Yasmin Mujahid. I ordered her book. So hers is faith-based. Um, it's all about, you know, connecting to God. It's in English and she writes really, really well. I wanted to be like Yasmin Mujahid. I wanted to be a writer like her. I wanted to be a speaker like her. So I actually ordered this on Amazon and, you know, and um, this book, Enjoy Your Life, uh, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Al-Rahman Al-Arifi, Enjoy Your Life. No, I haven't finished. I haven't not finished. It's not, you're not meant to sit down and finish everything, but you have things to grab on your bookshelf, sit down, spend five or 10 minutes just to read, to get inspired. Look at your bookshelf. Are you inspired by your bookshelf? All right, I've got more here. This is a Malay writer, Zabrina Abu Bakar, Life is an Open Secret. I invited her to one of our talks when I was a lecturer at UIA. And so she wrote several books, three books. I was inspired by these people. Um, I wanted to be a writer, but do I still want to be a writer? I'm, I'm a teacher at heart, okay. All right, you guys share your books. Tell us what's on in your on your bookshelf. What's what's the collection? Um, are you inspired by it? Do you want more books? Do you need to get rid of books? Okay, let me see. Um, oh, let's see what Amna shares. I'm now reading books that Papa used to read. I used to think they were boring. Yeah, business books. I yeah, uh, Papa had those kind of books as well. And I used to think, oh God, it looks so dry and. Doll. And now we're reading these books. Exactly. Um, all right. Let's see what you, you want to share. Hazlina, when I was in primary school, my teacher told me to buy a novel in English, then translate them in Malay. Ooh, never done that before. Great sharing. Wow, you you translated it in the, the entire book or just sections and see, that's really great. I, I want to know more about that technique. Okay, let me see. Um, Shin Fazil. Hi, madam. I have a question. How can we implement reading habits even though we are get, getting older? Is it too late to start? How can I uh, engage and keep the reading momentum? Thanks in advance. Really great. And Amla Nasha can help uh, along as well. Um, reading habits. I'm not asking you to read in one book, one sitting or one book, one week. But maybe you if you don't don't you don't have a book in hand like this like it's not on a bookshelf and all you can have your books on your phone instead and read from there so i would replace i would replace instead of looking let's say looking um at facebook or instagram i would immediately think of should i be reading something instead should I be reading something you said and open, you know, an article? Uh, if you have a book saved in here, do that first before you do other things. All right. So start small, start small, but consistent. That would be, that would be good. Okay. Uh, great question there. Aisha, uh, make a point to read articles on current issues. Yes. Think about, think about what gap do you need? to fill in your in your knowledge, in your knowledge, that makes sense. What gap are you trying to fill? Um, for me, because Aisha, she probably wants to read upon current issues. It's something that she wants to know more about. For me, it's spirituality. I want to know more uh, about Islam and Arabic and <clears throat> understanding fully, um, you know? So that's what I'm reading. So uh, Shin, think about, <clears throat> Shin Fazil, think about what what do you want to read so that you're excited to read um, on that topic? And then find an author that you'd love to read, you know, you'd love to read his book or her book. Find that author, okay? Could I share the picture of favorite books uh, on your page? Oh, okay, uh, I'll try my best. Thank you very much. Wow, Haslina, you translated the entire book that 
is wow, amazing. That's amazing. All right, Amna wrote a post about this some time back. Okay, thank you very much. There are lots of interesting Islamic books in the UK. And now when I share it with my colleagues, I translate it to BM. Wow, you guys are doing translation work. That is amazing. What a gift you have. Okay. Um, all right. I read, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad book by Robert Ooh, Kiyosaki. It's a good book to read to help us develop the mindset and financial knowledge. Yes, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read a little bit like maybe one or chapter one or two but we have that book because my father uh, has uh, we had that book back in our home in kl and i think aisha might have that book now i'm not sure okay great love it love it yes reading writing listening i just talked about i haven't talked about writing however but writing very quickly writing will help you to cement what you've learned and and so for us um i don't know how much you write but for me i don't write as much amna however she writes a lot more than any of us i think because she has she has to write a, a blog every thursday too so if you're an english if you are a subscriber to myenglishmatters.com you would get emails from us basically amna wrote those emails so she's writing. So she's a faster writer than any of us. That's because she's she has that habit of writing. Compared to me, I'm slow. I'm really, really slow. I can edit other people's work. But for me to produce my own original work, um, I would take a long time. That's because I haven't cultivated that habit. Um, that ha habit. But I used to write when I was a child. Um, but if I were if I wanted to improve myself, I would say my next step would be to write more. I used to write journals. Um, I used to write. I still do write for courses and all. I but it's not it's not so much of my personal feelings anymore. It's not about a story anymore. Maybe I should start writing. It will it will improve your vocab because you'll be like you you're always thinking what word should I use? Is there a synonym I can use that's better than this? It will force you to do your research because you want to find the exact word, the exact phrase, uh, synonyms. Yeah, you, you look for that, uh, for those kind of words to improve your writing. Excuse me. I hope you'll continue to write, Amna, because you want to write a book someday. Yes, good. You should. You should. Okay. All right. Great, great. Love it. Love it. All right. So writing. Get into the habit of writing just a bit. It's fine. Maybe writing your Instagram captions in English, even if it's broken, just try anyway. If you get feedback, if someone wants to edit your work, just thank them. You can always edit it afterwards, right? Okay. All right. So writing, reading, listening and speaking. Have I done speaking yet? Oh, speaking. Okay. My third tip. Moving on to my third tip. Speaking out loud speaking out loud this is my favorite okay now you could always read english materials out loud the way i think all of us did when we were children i don't know but for me i did that when i was a child i'd read you remember i told you the story of my mom bringing home books and comics and i'd be reading those books out loud because i'd lock the door i'd be in my in a uh, on a sofa and then i'd be reading out loud pretending I was a character and uh, doing voices and all. Um, yeah, that was great. So you can read English materials out loud or if you have a child, read to them out loud. And um, speaking out loud also means repeating what you hear on TV, repeating the, if you hear a new word, you will be like, oh, that's how it should be said. And so re repeating what you hear, that's a great way for you to speak out loud. Make an effort to use uh, the words and phrases you hear in your next conversation. Uh, talk to yourself on video, which I'll talk about after this. Talk to yourself in the car, right? Right, now, speaking out loud, fa my favorite activity speaking out loud is actually to speak on video. Keep a vlog, right? V-L-O-G, keep a vlog. Now, you don't necessarily have to publish it anywhere, but um, what you can do is you can set up your own Facebook group, uh, private, just you in it, 
just you in that Facebook group and go live in that Facebook group. It's just for you to keep a diary of in case your phone memory gets full. So in that Facebook group, turn on the live uh, button, press that and start speaking. Start speaking. Uh, so that is a challenge for you. That will help you to improve your fluency in no time, in no time. You know why? Because speaking on video uh, and keeping a vlog for yourself, for the sake of yourself, it will force you, it will force you to think in English. It will force you to um, come up with words and phrases. It will force you to think of, how do I say hello? Is there another way, instead of me doing, saying hi all the time, can I say, hello, how are you? Assalamu alaikum. How do I open? How do I end? How do I keep my points connected? It will force you to do that. And that will get you to fluency, inshallah, in no time. So keep a vlog, everybody. Keep a vlog. And, and as I said, it's for you. You don't have to publish it anywhere. It's private. It's a, a video diary. And then that's what I did. Before I actually, before I mustered the courage to go live on Facebook, I had a video diary. Um, I, I would say I practiced for a year. A year, exactly. I know, it's like discipline. Absolutely. And so if I look back at all those videos, it's embarrassing to watch. But luckily, it's just for me. No one else can watch it. But it was a practice for me. It was a, my way of to learn how to express my thoughts, um, how to keep it short if I have to. How I, I was like analyzing myself. Okay, I need more energy here. I need to make my voice a bit more, go higher, my inflection, my tone body language so when you keep a video you can actually watch yourself and 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 really look back at oh god i need to stop saying so i say so a lot or and a lot or you know or ums or las you catch yourself on video so that's a great thing so you can remove all these little things that little um fillers that you have you see Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you like the suggestion. Exactly. Facebook private group, just you in it. Don't force other people to watch your Facebook lives. It's just for you. It's just for you to practice. Okay. And tell us how, email it to us. Tell us how uh, um, it goes. Okay. Okay, right. So that's my tip for you. Maybe I can expand on that in a, a later Facebook live we can do. All right. That was tip number three, wasn't it? Yeah, we're at tip number three now. Tip number four, learn something new in English. So my question to you is, what are you interested to learn more about? What are you interested to learn more about? And then get the books, get the articles, get listen to the podcasts, okay? What are you interested to learn more about? Learn it in English, obviously. Let me give you some ideas of what what my students have learned and um, my friends and family have learned. Okay, so they have learned things like gardening, gardening from YouTube uh, channels, cooking, cooking, cooking channels, arts and craft. My daughter loves. What did she love to? Yeah, she when she was a child, she learned uh, origami, um, but now she's interested in Japanese, so she's. She's learning a new language, but that's Japanese. My uh, uh, number four, my number four tip is learn something new in English. Okay. I have a friend who's learning all about skincare, um, essential oils. So they're listening and watching how other people are talking about this topic on YouTube. Uh, she, you guys are, should be reading it on uh, articles and blogs. What else? A business. Business for me, Amna, we love personal development. We also love business. We're learning a lot. We're taking courses on that. So that's our that's 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 our favorite thing to do right now. So learning something new in English. Uh, like I've said health before, haven't I? Health, uh, yoga, exercise, 
um, learning about breathing, learning about uh, finances. Did I say breathing? I meant like yoga, basically. Yeah, yoga, finances, um, learning how to grow vegetable garden. So many things that you can learn. Make it fun. Learn something new in English. That's tip number four. Mira, you're learning uh, cooking. Let me see. Cooking page on IG. Ooh, I love Tabitha Brown's accent. Oh, something for us to look at. I've never, I've never heard of Tabitha Brown. I'll check it out. Thank you. Makeup tutorials. Yes, yes. Makeup tutorials. Exactly. A hijab tutorials. So many things. Exactly. So many. So learn something new in English. What are you interested to learn more about? Learn it in English. Write get inspired from your friends here write the topics that you want to learn more about get excited okay tip number five make learning english your mission that's easy that's like a summary of everything actually make english uh make learning english your mission so i want you to imagine yourself being able to speak english fluently Imagine yourself, is that a year from now? Is that two years from now or six months down the road? What does it look like to you, that future? What does the future look like? Um, are you now a more confident person? Are you able to speak up more? Are you able to express yourself in meetings? Are you able to present confidently and fluently? Um, so think about this and I want you to imagine yourself in the future and so when I was a child I told you before that I love to watch a lot of um, TV shows one of them were talk shows I love to watch talk shows like Oprah Winfrey uh, Ricky Lake and I imagine myself having a talk show right? or doing something with regards to speaking I was like imagining myself having a talk show or something now, obviously, I don't have a talk show, but I have a radio show, right? And that's something that I didn't know it was, it was going to come true. Um, so ima if you imagine yourself and visualizing yourself and making it your mission, inshallah, it will come true. Write down your goals in your book. Express your goals when you're doing the vlog so that inshallah, it will come true for you. Okay. Exactly, write a blueprint, have a blueprint, a long-term achievement, okay? Rate yourself right now because you, 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 you have a mission, right? You want to go forward, rate yourself. In terms of one to five, where are you? One being poor, five being excellent. Where are you now? Writing one to five, listening, speaking comprehension, understanding. Where are you now? Rate yourself. Are you happy with where you are right now? And if English is your mission, you should think, okay, if I am num if I am two, I want to get to five, I need to do something about it. Okay, I need to do something about it. Or if you are happy with where you are, my question is, do you really want to remain at your level? Is it good enough? at your level. If it's good enough, well done. But if you know you have room to improve, then make English, make learning English your mission and keep on improving, keep on improving, continue to learn, continue to learn. Okay, so those are my tips for you. Uh, tip number one, being mentally prepared. Number two, get as much English input as you can. Number three, speak out loud. Number four, learn something new in English to get your creative juices out. <laughs> Number five, make English, make learning English your mission. And if you haven't yet become a subscriber to myenglishmatters.com, be sure to subscribe. Become a subscriber because we give you more tips, weekly tips. We also update you with our upcoming lessons and courses and classes and workshops to our email subscribers. Okay. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. So 
that's it from me. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys next week or maybe it's Amna next week. But whatever it is, have a great day. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi